Yeah, here we go. Okay. Hey, welcome back. We uh, ads should have finished now. I don't know how many of you actually got them, but that's that's fine. We didn't do too much. We um, I just finished this this paragraph and then I deleted all of my current running uh, containers and then I deleted all of the networks that I have. So I have just the basic networks. Oh, you got a short ad. Nice. I'm glad that it's short and not, not too long. Um, let's see, maybe in our Docker exploration, in our Docker. Adventure? Adventures? Pathway? Journey.
Uh, what is that virtual camera thing? Um, what do you mean virtual camera? Do I use OBS to record videos as well or just stream? I, I do use OBS to record videos too. And in fact, right now I am recording at the same time. I um so I'm I'm streaming out and then I have a second disk drive inside of my desktop and I'm recording to there. So um that way I can have higher quality videos, which of course I forgot to do for several which is why several of the cut videos are much lower quality than they probably could be. Uh, so shortly, like soon, I think only the last couple streams I remember to do that, which is unfortunate. But yeah, I, you can record. I, I like recording with OBS. Like it, it works really well. And if you're if you're knowledgeable with OBS, it's a free solution that gives you really top quality. Uh, recording abilities and from what i understand pretty much all the professional streamers are using obs right now from what i understand there are of course paid options but i don't think they're worth it Oh, do I not? Okay, there you go.
So we want Docker run D name express PG. Let's do express crud. E, okay, so Postgres password, keyboard cat, network. Express crud network. Um, right, we don't have volumes for this yet. And then we run Postgres, okay. Right, what did we call this? Uh, express cred. Okay, so I think that works. Uh, and now I can do for all. Um, okay, so couldn't find the express crud in here, so. Oh, no, it's express crud PG. Oh, virtual camera, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, um, OBS added virtual camera a few years ago, like in 2020, I want to say. It's a really cool sort of system. It basically allows you to use OBS as an intermediary, as like a source for an actual like camera. So let's say you're opening Zoom to do a meeting and you want to have all the cool little stuff that OBS allows you to have. Like you want to have like a background and a green screen and like filter that stuff out. And you want to like add multiple windows and like little, little pop-ups. Then what you can do is you click on the start virtual camera button 
and then you can go into Zoom and say, hey, uh, use, um, use the OBS camera as the webcam. And bam, you, you can now basically get the power of OBS on Zoom. It's, it's really, really good. I like it a lot. It's amazing. Okay, so you're not Express Cred, you're Express Cred PG. E A I again. Hmm. It's not like it just didn't have time, right? It's that's the air. That's surprising amount of time. It's timing out for some reason. Um Oh wait. Is it the migrations? I bet I need to run the migrations. Uh, so this might work. Uh, let's do a Docker. I do a Docker exec. I don't need to do IT. Um, express crud. And then the command I want to run is npx connects. No, it didn't like that. Okay. Oh, so it doesn't like Express Cred up. What did I do wrong with this? Wait a second. Wait a second. I forgot to add it to the network. That would help. Uh, is it dash? And I think it is. Ooh, I don't remember if it's dash n or if it's dash dash network now. I think it's dash dash network. What I do for I did do dash dash network for it. Okay, so now if I do our curl, you should, there we go, okay. This is what I wanted to see. It, it's attempting to run it, but the table doesn't exist. Oh, what's this?
Okay. Um, oh, wait. Oh, gross. Okay, hold on. There we go. Much better. Okay, so we do our Docker run. We add it to the network now. I added in the environment variable um, to tell it how to connect in. We get that back. I then I kind of we're in our curl. What? Oh, stop. There you go. What? Where did I get that? Weird. Okay. I want to curl. Um, GP. Oh, oh, because I'm not doing curl over here. I'm doing curl over here. So give me all the tasks, and now we get all the tasks. Okay, so we come back to here. Um, that gets us the task back. Um, you are there. Okay, cool. Okay, there we go. Okay, so that is connecting to the networks. Great. OK, 
Uh, why can't you find this? That's why. I didn't start with a slash. Okay. Um, persist data with a volume. So let's say I want to submit a couple of these. So I want to do a um, curl. Okay, so it's been a while. So I think I can do H for header, right? I can say content type. I don't know if it matters. Um, and then body, I want you to be JSON, so uh, we're going to have name, task one, um, and I want to send that to Um, okay, so that's not how to do it. That was like dash B. Um, JSON. Okay, fine. We'll just go look it up. On curl JSON header. Oh, it's capital H, so we can do content type. Oh, and send strings. Um. And, oh, then it's dash dash data, and then also in a string. Okay, that's what I wanted to do. So, oh, it's H for header, D, not B. That's my problem. So... D for that. Uh, you also need to be in quotes. Um... I think you're all, are you colon? I don't remember. We'll find out. Uh, yes, okay, so that was not the correct header. Maybe it's colon. That, there it is, there it is colon. Okay, so uh, let's create a couple tasks. Okay, so
per se, like, so yeah, it isn't a problem per se. Is it per se or per se? I don't remember. I think I'm going to leave it like this and we'll, we'll see if anybody yells at me. Uh, While well, it isn't a problem per se, um, Okay, so we might want to have the data separated from the container. Okay, so we can do this with um, uh, Docker volumes. All right, let's... Um, I have a bunch of these, but uh, I don't need them anymore. Let's go ahead and delete them all. That's fine. Uh, oh, I have a volume in use already, don't I? Um, Uh, okay, that one's in use. Who are you used by? Uh, I know there's a way to inspect it, but I don't care that much. I don't have you running. Are you running because of you? Oh, it's being in use by this thing, whatever that is. So we could copy you and go searching for this. So that is 263AAC. Oh, which is this one. Our express crud at PG. Uh oh. No, okay, so I don't have the dash volume on here. Huh. Why are you still up? Why do you think that you have, okay, whatever. Um, Oh, because does it create a tone volume? I didn't think it did. Okay, so.
All right. Okay, so we create our Express CRUD PG volume. Oh no, oh, the music did stop. Yeah, every once in a while, I notice that Petzl just freezes. And it like clean, it thinks that it's playing, uh, but it's not really playing. It just, at the end of the song too. All right, so I started up again. It should be going. Thank you, Chantilly. Also, hello. How are you doing today? Uh, Moaid, uh, how are you doing today? Is there a section? Not really. Nope, that's wrong. Okay, so here's our Postgres. We have it on the network. We have everything else. And so here's our network goes there. Um, and I want to attach a volume. The volume is going to be the Express CRUD PG volume. And it's going to go into there. And then everything else is exactly the same.
Um, let's see. Uh, happy Tuesday. Uh, you're doing good, Chantilly. Excellent. Um, also, Mohaid, you're doing good too. Um, are, am I on Docker? Yes, we're doing Docker right now. Um, also, Nef Nefezik. Uh, hello. There are a surprisingly few amount of vowels in that name. Um, no, I still haven't tried Wes term. Sorry about that. It's on my list, but it's pretty far down. Sorry about that. Uh, you're learning Docker right now. Any great, great resources? Um, I am not aware of super really great resources right now. I've been going through like Docker and sort of teaching that. So uh, the, I guess like the live streams that I have are sort of like what I would consider like a free tier for the course uh, that I'm creating. Um, so that, that works there. Um, besides that, the, the Docker documentation itself isn't that bad. Uh, and you could probably go through it and just sort of like play around with it and, um, and figure some things out. Um, I don't know if CJ with Coding Guard never did anything with Docker. There probably is some stuff on, uh, Free Code Camp. They, they usually have some good resources too. So that's, that's where I would probably start looking. Um, Elias, Elis, uh, hello, how are you doing today? Um, I'm using Zellige, uh, and Alacrity together. So Zellige, Alacrity, and Helix are the three tools that I'm using. So Alacrity is the terminal itself. Uh, Zellige is the window manager that I'm using. And then Helix is the editor that I'm, that I'm in. So those three together are, are what I have. Hopefully that answers the question. Actually, I don't know if I ever tried without. So we just ran this. Let's try a curl. Um, oh yeah, we we need to rerun the um, we need to rerun our our migrations because we just recreated the new database. So
Okay, I thought about another thing that we're gonna need for this, which is um uh automating the setup. So automating the setup with automating the setup with Docker Compose. Okay. We're getting close. We've done a lot today. <laughs> we've finished the project and we've done all of these articles. All right. Um, we got about 10 minutes or so before the next ad break. So we'll continue on, but I'll probably take a quick break during that time. Get up, stretch, grab a snack. Um, all right. Use a Docker file to customize a Docker image. Great. Okay. So now, now we're finally able to come back to here and um, creating a Docker file is, is fun because um, it's it's basically automating stuff so we don't have to do this entire Docker, like all of this stuff is, is, is not great. It's not fun to, to work with. So, um, oh, I'm not in the right one. I wanna come over here. So we're gonna use, uh, we're gonna touch, Oh, I'm in the wrong one. Um, okay, who cares? Uh, we'll just open you up. This will be fine. We're fine. So instead of here, let's create a Docker file. Um, now I have I have some automation stuff in here, or not really automation. The LMS, no LMS, the LSP, the language server protocol. Yeah, the LSP uh, does know in, in VS code what all of these are because it recognizes, hey, it's a Docker file. So it knows it knows what to go in here. So the first thing that we have to have is this from, um, but I also like to open up the Docker reference. So Docker file reference. which is here. So uh, starting, it, it really starts at this point in time. So we need from, and then it's gonna be the name of an image. So from the name of an image, well, what are we using uh, for our Node.js? We're using Node 20. If we don't do anything else, it's gonna assume that we're going to Docker Hub for this, which is great. That's exactly what we're using anyway, so we're, we're fine. Um, okay, so that's from uh, run. Okay, so the run instruction, so run is gonna be run anything that we want in there. So for example, when we first create this image, do we want to run any commands in there? Uh, like, for example, do we want to like run an apps get update or something like that? And in this case, I don't think that we do. So um, that being said, we should have, let's see, we can do a run. Uh, this command could be something like ls and it will actually display the contents of this out. So uh, we can do ls and then
Um, Archification, hello. How are you doing today? Are we, are we learning Docker right now? Yes, we're going through Docker and, and using that. Or rather, I'm creating a course on Docker. So we're finally getting to Docker file. I think that Docker is a pretty, um, I think that's a pretty useful uh, thing to learn. At least like the basics of it. Like if you if you know the basics of Docker, you'll be able to take that to pretty much any other Docker-like thing, probably like Podman. Uh, but you can also like use this for local development, which I think is extremely helpful. What are some advantages to Docker versus something like a statically linked program with embedded files? Think of Docker less of a like application that you're running and more like um, more like the virtualization for where you can run your code. So let's um, may maybe like I'll, I'll give a couple different examples. Uh, which will like be useful in different scenarios. So for solo development, we might want to run our stuff to develop in Docker, which I believe actually developing in Docker is way more, you get way more benefit out of it than production in Docker. And when developing a Docker, I don't want to necessarily have to install a database and run it on my system. Um, but I also need a database running on my system to like for most applications. Well, I can have that database running in Docker. So even if I don't want my code running and executing in Docker, I might run my code in, I might run a database in Docker and then just connect to that. And then when I don't want the database anymore, I can just get rid of it and it's gone. Super easy. I could also, um, if I'm on a team and I wanna make sure that everything is that everybody on the team is running the exact same version of rust the same libraries the same everything else uh, i could set up docker so that way they can run it and basically i can now be confident they're running the same version of rust i don't have to I don't have to check like hey remember you switched over and installed rust up nightly right or like a very specific version of Rust too. Uh, no, you can do that, and you can do that with Docker and say like, no, 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 you run this, and now you know it has to be, it has to be that specific version of of Rust, that specific version of Node. Like for example, here we we're saying this is going to run Node version twenty. So if I share this with everybody else on the team they have to run at node version 20. They'd have to go in and purposely do an NPM update or something else just to get that. Uh, and I don't have to do any shenanigans, we just have it, access to it. And the same with the database. What if you want Postgres 16? What if you want Postgres 12 or 10? Um, what if you want MySQL, like whatever version that is? Uh, it, the, the, the versions and setting those and locking those down for development purposes, is really really strong so you can compile your program for linux and then use a docker image to deploy to windows and or os x without having to compile them well i mean they're going to be compiled anyways but you could compile in docker for deployment to linux you could do that now deploying like compiling it for OS X from, uh, from like a Windows system, eh, that's new. you're not really going to get that from Docker. Um, I I find that uh, web dev type stuff in production for Docker is much more useful than uh, like than anything else. So I personally prefer devving in Docker. That's where I get the most use out of it. Now Kubernetes. Um, I think you can use Docker with that, although they've moved away from it and use their own container system from what I understand. Uh, however, if you use something like um, AWS ECS, then that is that is definitely running Docker in the cloud in production. 
Uh, and that's sort of like the same thing where you just say, okay, my web server is going to execute inside of a Docker container and that is loaded and run from an image in, from AWS. So it's it's it, that can be very useful. I don't think we're gonna go into that. Is ECS just Docker Swarm? Oh, I, did, I never really realized that. Oh, that's pretty cool. So maybe I am using Docker Swarm, but I don't know that. I do have, I do have one of my, for Brooks builds, I have one thing running in AWS ECS, which is super easy to set up, super nice. 